Hey guys, today we will talk about seven foil prices that have hit very interesting price points. So let's talk about Nico Boles from the Vault Dragons. Nico Boles is a classic card and this is a unique foil and the fact that the artwork is a different artwork. Very beautiful card and as people get into the story this card will go up and up in price. It's almost $60 now, which is pretty good because the MSRP of most from the vaults are $40. So for one card to be worth 150% the MSRP of a product makes it a very good product. Now, I know every store doesn't sell it for that, but my local game store, they actually give it for a Friday Night Magic prize in lieu of the pool right in lieu of the money that people are putting in normally they do very good prize support and I'm, i was always super excited to play when it was from the vault was the prize support so beyond that just a beautiful card i have one in person and it is a great piece of artwork with a great the foiling is very weird and it does curve because it is from the vault from the vault is a unique item in terms of durability there is none but the artwork of the gold the gold on gold gold is very pretty so it is a 60 dollar card now has been trending up for some time i do expect it to continue to go up mainly because of hour of devastation is nico boles and some players who are newer may not be introduced to him until that set so Emancipation Angel is a $5.19 foil. So the chart only shows the non-foil. It is a beautiful foil and the card is okay. The foil, in my opinion, is the only valuable thing about the card. It is great for angel collectors. It is great for people who have EDH decks. Just comes out as a fantastic foil with a semi-useful ability especially if you are going to run angels it's not bad now one of the things that i do want to mention about this card was at the time the foil was considered bulk the card so saw no play in standard and for the most part it was less than a 50 cents a dollar foil and that is interesting to note it is very interesting to note that when a card does not see play in standard, the foil price may be the lowest price it is until later on. Now, the foil would eventually need to be picked up in another format like ED8, and that is a great buying opportunity. So when cards are disvalued because of standard and haven't been found out in an older format yet, they spike at a higher amount than just regular so it's a high risk high reward type of card it's a beautiful card and it's something that i look at the artwork and it should have it's pretty obvious that this card look at the sky look at the clouds look at the the vantage point this card was destined to be a five dollar foil i would i would buy for five dollars it's a great it's a great piece of artwork and that is what some people are looking for now now, talking about classic cards, we have Brainstorm. The last time I talked about this card a few years ago, it was $100 in foil. This is the Macadian Mask of Brainstorm. So, in my opinion, it is one of the most beautiful cards. It is one of the strongest cards in Legacy. Overall, just a fantastic piece of EDH, a fantastic piece for any EDH deck. One of the crazy things about Brainstorm was that at the time, it was always pricey, but I feel like it was like $25, $30 when Mercadian Mask came out. So it was always very good because Brainstorm was played in standard, as you can imagine, as was Dark Ritual, which also is the Mercadian Mask. And I remember Dark Ritual's foil was actually about the same price or a little bit more. Fantastic card. And if you had speculated on brainstorm a foil brainstorm at the time wow that would have been it would have been really easy to get um, i remember having a friend who had two of them in foil he was a foil collector 
and he had no idea what they were worth. I don't think anyone did at that time, at least in my play group, the foil. So if you had a foil rare, you didn't get a regular rare. That made the foil rares much more desirable because it is likely that you can get, way more likely you can get a foil common and it takes a common slot. So the, the pack has you know, maybe more value because you also get the foil brainstorm as well as the rare. And as kids in middle school, we didn't really know. I, it was in seventh grade. I remember him showing me his foil collection. I remember having seeing two of these and then a foil dark ritual. And he would have straight up traded it for a foil rare of any type. Now talking about those foil rares, Brushland. Okay, ninth edition Brushland somehow is $112. Now before you guys say why is this the case, it's because it is in a, I want to say a tier 1.5 vintage legacy modern deck, Aldrazi. Aldrazi loves this card and it fits perfectly for Aldrazi. It actually produces green, white, and the colorless. So it's a tri land for that type of deck. It's a very good card. You can see that the regular version was spiking like crazy. This was a penny. This was like a bulk, bulk, bulk card. And suddenly the regular version is $10 or $13 now. And the foil is $112. The foil here was much cheaper. And all of the pain lands have gone up, but Brushland is the example of one that people really want for the Adrazi decks. It is on color. If you could go back in time, this would be such an easy buy. I don't, well, I don't understand. Obviously, no one could predict the Adrazi and the Adrazi being so dominant. Man, this was so cheap. Everyone had these and no one back in the day knew what they were worth. So just like dual lands, if you play during revised, unlimited, beta, and alpha, you knew that like dual lands were like better, but like it was so minimally better at the time because again, land, you didn't know if land was going to be special. And one of the things that most new players don't appreciate is when they pull a underground C from their booster pack, they're expecting a dragon or an angel or something that's more fantasy and they get a land. Same with brush land. There's still those opportunities today, but they are in foil. So talking about foil artifacts that are <laughs> uncommon and Dynamo, wow, this is a 30 plus dollar foil. Mm. Mm. So one of the things that has constantly surprised me is the foil multiplier of some of these cards. Now, the Dynamo is expensive. It is $8.70. It is played in the large majority of EDH decks that would ma want mana ramp. It obviously produces a ton of mana. And even back when it was in standard, it was a good card. A lot of these foils were not bad in standard. So they never hit the very low price. But the today's price is just outrageous in terms of where it currently is and how much money it costs. It's one of those things that when you, you truly look at it and you can go back in time, you don't need to go all the way back when they were doing alpha and beta, although that would be nice because every booster pack is worth a ton. You can go as recently as, as I'll show you in the next card, Meriden or Urza Legacy. The opportunity is in foils and back then because the foils didn't have the multiplier they have today because EDH was not a format. So a lot of the foils that people just had lying around, my friend had a binder and I guarantee you his foil binder is worth a ton of money. In the past, I have tried to buy it for him. I tried to buy it from him once EDH became a format and I knew he really wanted a Alienware. So I was like, you know, just pick whatever it is and I'll buy you that Alienware. But what I mean, we're just old school, so no one really sells their collection like their collection from childhood. Next, guardian idol. Here's a tip: if you have a foil, mana acceleration card, keep it. Just keep it because one day it'll be five dollars, no problem. And this is what it is: guardian idol was not considered a great card back in the day. I think you saw some fringe playability it is mana acceleration. But artifacts, foil artifacts, 
fit more EDH decks because they fit all of them. So what you want is you don't want a five color foil unless it's like a legendary card. You want easy stuff that people will want to trade and it's very liquid. And there's no more liquid card than Guardian Idol in that type of card. Overall, like some of these card prices I look at and I tell, it seems like there's still a lot of opportunity in the foil market for the older foils. A lot of the prices haven't really gone up to something crazy and you can still get them in bulk. You can buy bulk stuff in foil at the flea market. Uh, it's I, I have to check the price. I've never actually looked at it, but last time I looked at it, I knew I was like, hmm, this is probably not a good deal. But my flea market, you can buy a 500 card box and it would be all foil. Now, there will be foil land and you can't really control it. There's no returns. They have a new, no return policy because then it would be insane if everyone just returned what they didn't want. Uh, but overall, it is a really fun time. I will take you to the flea market uh, at that time. I did. So this weekend, I found a dog on my street. And yes, I did post her um and she's injured and i've been taking care of her i actually took off um i actually worked thursday and friday from home so i could uh take care of her and get to her to see the vet um notified the neighbor volunteer group that finds and micro and does the microchipping and scanning of uh, dogs in my neighborhood and she is at my home right now so yeah oh okay anyway let's end with um the anointed Persistent. So remember when I said this card was going to be like very valuable in foil? It got there. It's a $15 foil. It used to be like 7 or 8 I forget how much it used to be, but it was not 15 When it came out, it was much, much lower. Even the non-foil was very low. So non-foil looks like it was below $2, and now it is 5 I would not be surprised if the foil was like 7 bucks and now it's 15 Some cards are just destined to be good. Like, you look at them and you say, hmm, doubling effect. Hmm, every other doubling effect ever has been very pricey. Okay. Yeah, maybe I should buy that at the pre-order price. So, th some foils are pretty obvious. Brainstorm would be obvious at the time. Like, they were obvious even at the time. It just was people thought $15 for this card may be too much. But in two years, who knows what this card is? $30, $45, and, and foil, of course, I'm talking about. Maybe more. Who knows? I mean, foils are foils, and they attract a different audience, and that audience is more willing to spend money. Uh, now, you do have to make sure it's near mint. One of the main issues with foils that I have dealt with in the past, conditioning is 10, the 10 times as the buyer who would buy a foil brainstorm compared to a buyer who would buy a regular brainstorm from McKinney Mask that buyer will be maybe 50 times as picky because they're paying 50 times, well, in this case, 200 times as much. And they have every right to do so, but they do want to negotiate with like this Nick and that Nick. And that's kind of annoying because the card is so old. Like it's not going to be near mint anymore. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.